intervention. I mean, government, Uncle Sam took a seat at the poker table and said, okay, everyone take your cards and said, okay, I'm going to take my cards, but you know what? I play by different rules. So if I want to take some of yours instead of mine, you got to do, well, you got to do that. If I want to take extra ones from the pile, I mean, he's changing the rules all the time. So the banks and our servicers, as we're trying to call them, some of them are sort of sitting on hold saying, let me wait and see what the government does because, yeah, they've given me this TARP money, but they've also changed some, some of the rules. So I might want to give it back before I help bail this person out. There's a lot well, of that's, uncertainty. That's awful because, you know, that's the other thing is that people say, okay, the, the money went to the banks and said, this is supposed to help people. This is money that's supposed to loosen up the credit. Where did it go? All right, but Nobody we, knows where it went. The big banks are sitting on piles of money is the perception. Right. Well, any time that you're trying to fix a problem like this, it's going to, de by definition, just be a series of trial and error experiments. I mean, we really never know how some of these things are going to play out. If you look back at the history, what the Bush administration did in the initial days of these problems, it's really kind of funny. I mean, the first step was to have banks voluntarily freeze mortgage foreclosures or voluntarily freeze interest rate resets. And of course, no one really did that. That didn't work. The next step was a $2 billion discount window where they solicited four of the major banks to each take money from the discount window to sort of encourage other banks to be borrowing money so they can free up credit too. But when we look back at that, $2 billion, I mean, that's a joke. I mean, we just, we just uh, you know, advanced $800 billion and there'll be more down the pike last October. Okay, so Sherry, how do you get... How do you how do you get a workout with somebody? How do you get somebody on the phone? How do you how do you save your house when you're really desperately five, trying to? Five step plan for viewers who are having issues themselves with foreclosure. Step number one is absolutely do not panic because this is not your father's foreclosure, and you just need to get a grip of yourself and start making head smart choices. Step number two is definitely call your lender and I realize sometimes they can't do anything. Most of the lenders out there now are, are initiating a three-month plan for what we call a forbearance. So they'll let it, they're letting borrowers modify their payment for three months and they're saying at the end of this three months call us back and maybe we'll do a modification then. One of the things they're trying to do is weed out people who really truly just don't have sustainable ownership in the situation that they're in. And, so and it's honestly, kind of a three-month trial period to see if you're actually going to be that's what they're the that's what's doing and be persistent and when you call your lender that that actually leads to the third step which is to educate yourself because one of the reasons we're in this situation in the first place is that people really didn't, we relied too much on mortgage brokers and products they were selling us and things they were telling us. One of the things that when I talked to people that very seldom was done was actually reading their loan documents. So I would suggest now that if you have time, take out your loan documents and read them. Now's a really good With time to know over your shoulder. Say. Good luck understanding well, it. Well, there's no pictures. <laughs> they're, not, they're not necessarily interesting, but there are default provisions. And in the book, we show some example default provisions, so people should definitely be aware of what they say. When you call your lender, you want to find out, is your loan owned or insured by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac? Because if it is, there are some other government alternatives available to you. You want to find out what is the foreclosure process in your state. Different states have different processes and timelines, and different lenders have different attitudes about that. So in other words, sometimes they're very aggressive about pursuing them, and sometimes there's not. All right, let's take a break. A more, more of this very interesting conversation about what to do if you're trying to save your home. We have some emails coming up, and we will continue. Sherry Olofsson, author of Foreclosure Nature, just going through five steps you can do to try to save your home if you're facing foreclosure. Uh, step three was educate yourself, <laughs> read your document, you know, find out what you know what you got yourself into. What are four and five? Step four is actually probably the most challenging step for most people, and that is to really take a cold, hard look at your own situation. And I call this sort of self-assessment. Is, is what got you into this problem a temporary thing, maybe a job loss or a divorce or an illness, or is it a more, temp a more permanent problem? I mean, did you really buy into one of these McMansions, something that's above what you could afford? Because, you know what, Kathy, it's not like, you know, if I went out and I bought a pair of Gucci shoes and I spent $300 on shoes instead of $20 at Payless, mm -hmm. once I 
lay out that money, that's that. If I need to replace the heels, I take them to my cobbler. It's the same $12 or $15 to replace the heels on either. A house is not like that. If you spend more money on a 5,000 square foot house than you would on a 2,500 square foot house, your taxes are going to be more, your insurance is going to be more. I mean, heck, your lawn service guy is going to be more. Air conditioning, everything. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to actually decide, I mean, brutally, can I really even afford to try yeah. to keep this house? And a lot of people don't do that. Most people don't do that. Most people don't know how to do that. And that leads to something else. On the website, we have some links to some really good resources. Um, one of those is a HUD counseling service. It's a free service, and they do answer the phone, and you can call, and they will walk you through an excellent personal budgetary preparing uh, plan. Once you know where you want to head, I mean, you know, like they say to kids, you know, you have to know what direction you want to go mm -hmm. in in order mm -hmm. to get there. Right, right. So once you know that, then you can look at a forbearance, a modification, a short sale. I mean, what's the best yeah. alternative based on my right, realistic right. situation? And last step is what? The last step is get help. And if you can afford to call an attorney, that's great. Uh, again, on the website, we have some really great tips on how to choose a good attorney, what the initial conversation should be, how to keep the fees down, how fees are structured, how to communicate with your attorney. If you can't afford an attorney, we also have some very good links for uh, to uh, not-for-profit services. In Florida, we have the Florida Bar. It's helping with modifications. If you're not in default yet, you'll be assigned an attorney through the Florida Bar. Uh, most counties have their legal aid groups hmm. who are hmm. helping distressed homeowners right. who are actually in foreclosure. Jane emails us, two years ago I held a second mortgage on a home I sold. Now the mortgagor has defaulted. Can I process a do-it-yourself foreclosure? If so, where can I go to find guidelines? Uh, actually, again, the website is a great resource. And I have to say the book actually explains the foreclosure mm -hmm. process. Here in, in Florida, we live in a uh, judicial foreclosure state as opposed to a non-judicial state, meaning that our foreclosures do go through the court system. There's about four or five steps in every foreclosure, and those steps are explained in, in, in the book. Um, there are foreclosure attorneys out there who, for not too much of a fee, probably about twelve or $1,300, will help to process a foreclosure and I would probably suggest that because when you think about the opportunity cost if you make a mistake of having to take mm -hmm. another two right. or three months to foreclose it's worth it. Jeff I would like to remind you to save some blame for the builders these developers have profited greatly over the past 20 years the builders profit margin is greater if they build the McMansions than it is for a simple starter home perhaps the builders should be forced to build two starter homes for every McMansion save some blame for the builders mm -hmm. plenty of blame to go around mm -hmm. isn't there absolutely absolutely but they're getting theirs right now yeah yeah so um, if is this a good time to buy a home excellent time to buy probably the best time that there will ever be in our lifetimes interest rates are low prices are reasonable in fact the recovery everyone agrees is going to be starting with first-time home buyers because you know what in this country it still makes more sense to own than to rent and we over the course of this crisis so far have been having a lot of pent-up demand where people were afraid to get in the market so there are more first-time home buyers out there than usual fifty percent of the transactions nationwide are first-time home buyers the other forty percent of course are coming from distressed homeowners mm -hmm. but excellent time to buy plus we've got the new eight thousand dollar credit for first-time home buyers uh, Linda and Lutz, if you're trying to stay in your home but can't afford it, is there any way we can get our property taxes reduced to be able to afford it? I mean, our values have gone down significantly. Um, wow. And Linda, I'm, I'm interested in what you would do with step number two if you can't afford to stay in your house to so take a look at why can't I stay at in my house and is it just the property taxes so her question is anything I can do about the property taxes absolutely. in order to be able to afford to stay in my house absolutely and and uh, at Fowler White Boggs that's one of the things we do for commercial property owners as soon as we or if we end up foreclosing on a commercial property one of the first things we do for the lender is look at what the property is assessed at and then petition if it's worth less now to have oh. those taxes reduced and the petition time in most counties is uh, August when your mm -hmm. trim notices come out mm -hmm. and there's a process that can be followed again something that we discuss on the web Website, or you can call your local property appraiser's office. Most of them also have websites that explain the process. And in of most disputing. areas, yeah, in most areas, there are actually services that are great uh, that will petition to have your property taxes reduced if if they should be reduced. Mm -hmm. um, and they usually charge about thirty percent of what they save you, so it's really a win-win. But the other thing is your insurance, because if you're one of those fortunate people to get a principal write down and your value is less and your and your mortgage is less, your homeowner's insurance should be less too.